the Neon Dynasty Championship. Marshall Seckliff with Cedric Phillips. And we are all set for round nine action. We're still playing Alchemy here in the early stages of day number two. And I uh, got a little bit of spice in the feature match area here. <laughs> How about some Turbo Mill for you here, Cedric? Are you interested? Well, you know, coming in this weekend, this is... I don't know, last on my list of things that were going to happen. So yeah, I'm very much interested. Thanks for asking. Yeah, Shoti Asoka has, has sleeved up uh, the virtual turbo mill deck is what I like to call it. It's the type of deck that can mill you out in just a single turn, even under the right circumstances. Sitting across from him, Toru Saito, world championship competitor on mm -hmm. the deck with the target on its back, Naya mm -hmm. Runes. But that has not stopped Toru from having a very good start to the tournament. Six and two coming into this round. Shota also six and two. These players both from Japan and looks like they are ready to roll. Hand looks pretty good on the opener here for Shota. You see Invoke Calamity times two in the lower right part as well. This is a card that uh, it can do numerous things in the deck, but uh, how about two Tasha's hideous laughter at the same time? That is a, uh, a powerful combo and perhaps a game winner. What's notable here for me with this is it mill choice is, again, coming into this weekend, you and I have talked about this ad nauseum, as has the rest of the gang. Look, we knew the Naya Runes was going to be the deck to beat, right? Now the question is, is how can it stand up to the hate and everything else? This generous visitor is going to bite the dust here, it looks like, at just a moment. But there's only one person playing is it mill this weekend or anything mill related. Uh, right. We're watching them. And that is a loud statement, right, of... I think this deck is good enough because let's think about what Shota generally plays. He loves a good control deck. Uh, yep. He might play the team deck. And I, look, I know that he's he has like a pretty wide range, but not, I don't think this wide. I mean, only person in the tournament doing this thing where if he's right, looks like a genius. And if he's wrong, it's uh, it's kind of awkward. Definitely. Well, it's a statement. I'm, I'm digging the choice. It's a huge statement. And I'm digging the risk and the choice here this weekend. Yeah. One way to kind of conceptualize what Shota's decided here is... He has taken a blue-red control shell, and he's kind of picked a win condition that's difficult to interact with and can kind of one-shot you out of nowhere. And, yeah. you know, that that's an interesting take because, you know, you don't see a lot of is-it control decks either, but he must have felt that the combination of this deck's ability to keep pressure off of its back long enough to get its combo or you know, string together the cards that it needs was good enough. And, and that's why we see it here. And look at this, an interesting decision here from Shota early. He has Prismari Command. He could have used it right away to kill a creature, maybe even make a treasure, but he decided to try to get value from Jwari Disruption and boom, he gets it. Yeah, really nabs one of the best possible targets he could have. Looks like he may go for the command here though. And it looks like Prismari Command, we're gonna see deal two damage and create a treasure, divide by zero, which has been rebalanced. So there's some slight shifts there in hand alongside two copies of Invoke Calamity. Invoke Calamity to me, Marshall's interesting for this weekend because as you kind of go through Alchemy and you figure out, okay, what are the most powerful things to be doing? You know, what are the pillars of the format? Runes is certainly one. Archon of Amiria we've learned is a second one. And Invoke Calamity is an incredibly powerful card, but we're talking about a card that has four red mana symbols in its casting cost, and you really got to build around it. But it looks like Shota felt like that card was more than powerful enough to try to build around. You can certainly see the upper potential on a card like that, right? You read it, you go, hey, uh, there's got to be something stupid I could do with it. <laughs> right. And I will say, though, the third copy here, perhaps not really what he had in mind. I would agree. I would agree. No arguments here. But he does have access to divide by zero to keep Saito off balance and then maybe even learn if the spell costs four or less, which I think they all do in this deck. Yeah. Um, and so he can maybe ship away one of these. Remembering that you can learn for cards, you know, lesson cards out of your board. You also can just rummage. You can discard a card, draw a card. Which this deck is actually very interested in, given the power of Invoke Calamity. That's right. Perhaps a forced play here for Shota. Doesn't have a whole lot else to do. All right, I'm going to learn and get a, get a way to find a land here. Okay, right. this makes some sense. 
So far, size. so good here for Shota, right? Like he's at eighteen. Yeah, he's at eighteen. <laughs> There's nothing on board currently. Finally, something's able to stick. He can play environmental sciences, and now he's drawn another. Oh, look at this! He's just gonna sit, give himself maximum options on the divide mm -hmm. by zero invoke, or invoke. All right, it's time, finally, all right. Yeah, this is, you're about to have a bad time, I think. Yeah, so probably gonna be Prismari Command plus Divide by Zero here. That's a nice clean six. You'll see a lot of three mana instants and sorceries here from Shota. And now are we gonna see some digging? Yes, we yep. are. No time for treasure, so environmental sciences well, it served a role here. It's going to be upgraded into some card from the top of the library. <laughs> and you see Tasha's hideous laughter there as well. But it's kind of cool. He can keep it in his hand. He can put it in his yard. It doesn't really matter when it comes to Invoke Calamity. It can cast those spells from your hand or your graveyard. I have to imagine, and I feel like a broken record saying this sometimes in, the, in these events uh, that we cover, but if you're bringing this deck... If you're Shota and you're bringing this deck, you either have a outrageously good runes matchup or you're incredible against everything else. Mm -hmm. And there is the possibility that you're great against both. And if that is the case, ooh, boy. That's right. Land off the top is a welcome addition to the board, though you do see the awkwardness here. He's got triple red and invoke is a very, very difficult card to cast. You actually need four red manas. Yeah. Mana available. But uh, apparently the juice is worth the squeeze because we just yes. saw one resolve and that was pretty darn good. And I got a feeling we're going to see others resolve over the course of this game. That's right. He's also got unexpected windfall that he can use to uh, to generate not only uh, an extra card, but but also the two treasure, which, you know, that that really matters when it comes to casting these invoke calamities. For sure. I'm really impressed, by the way, with his ability to just keep Saito at bay. You know, for a deck that can be very explosive and considering that Shota doesn't really, like, at least thus far, we haven't even seen him use a removal spell exactly. <laughs> He's really kept himself at a very high life total here. Well, it, it kind of plays like those old, uh, old is a weird word to use here, but those old uh, Outrun Epiphany decks, right? You just... Keep you off balance, keep you off balance, divide here, fading hope there, and then all of a sudden, boom, taking all the turns. Now, that's not what's happening here. Instead, the plan is, boom, I'm milling all of your deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Arguable which one is a more enjoyable experience for the opponent. <laughs> all of their cards going bye-bye is uh, going to be frustrating for some players. That's right. And, you know, it's worth noting here as well that in Alchemy, right, it's a pretty powered-up format, right? We're not We're not talking about, you know, Legacy or Modern or something, but people tend to push their cards down to the lower end of the casting cost range when possible. And we see that definitely with the Naya runes deck. Uh, it has an average casting cost of, you know, somewhere in the two ish range. And that means that cards uh, like Tasha's hideous laughter, probably two of them is enough to, to GG. Almost certainly. Yeah. Almost certainly. Right now you're seeing, Saito agonizing over where to put these runes because, of course, he'd rather put them on the Runeforge champion, but instead mm -hmm. is loading up on a Cave of the Frost Dragon to be able to activate over the course of some point. But here's here, here's the difficulty, right? Is As he is agonizing over what to do, Jota's just sitting here and going, okay, you know, if anything that bothers me, I'll divide by zero. I can respond in kind, whatever. And if you don't do anything threatening, it seems like a great time to resolve Unexpected Windfall. Okay, there's the windfall, there's the treasures. A couple of lands and a spike field hazard into play. There's the fourth red source from lands as well. It is worth noting that Invoke Calamity does exile the things that you cast off of it. It also exiles itself. Yeah, it's certainly for the best. You right. Get little, you get a little wild <laughs> if that weren't true. Goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, you know, so if you're thinking, well, you know, why doesn't Shota just fire off and invoke, then just do it again the next turn and, and use that Tasha's hideous laughter twice for the GG. That that's why. Ooh, showdown the skulls. Hey, a couple of cards deeper in the deck, huh? 
you helping me helping you <laughs> i was gonna say also that's the most expensive card yep <laughs> that's a lot of help it really is and you'll start to see some of the, the cool combos that can come out here for Shota with Unexpected Windfall as well. Right now, though, a, a good opening. Oh, look at this. All right, let me, what are we thinking? Taking a look at the hand, taking a look at the graveyard. Of course, when you have the choice, you know, getting stuff out of your yard is preferable since you can just cast the stuff from your hand later. But uh, the option is nice. Looks like we're going to discard a land for Unexpected Windfall and then find another card to play here. Okay. It's going to be Voltage Surge. Yeah. But nice. it's going to take a sacrifice of one of those treasures. If he, Yeah, and he actually does do that. He wants to get rid of one of these Runeforge champions. It upgrades the Surge to four damage, so enough to kill it. And Shota's just playing a good control game right now. Yeah, this is just interaction back and forth however i want to it's basically all on his terms it, nothing is being forced right now right you know he's not going scrambling and oh, i need to find a burn down the house or divide by zero or i'm really gonna die it's just kind of hey pick and choose picky apart at my leisure i'm still sitting at 16 as we're working ourselves into what i'd consider to be the late game now so yeah life is pretty good for the i can't believe i'm saying this is it mill player <laughs> I'm surprised too, but I'm here for it. And look at this, the full control shell coming together. Mascot sure. exhibition out of the board and into hand. And with that one last land, <laughs> he just cast it. Sure. Why not? This is kind of incredible. Down to 13 after uh, a ruined up Runeforge champion hits him for three. Oh boy. That's actually a one of in his deck as well. I call that a one of fun of there and discover. Yeah, it's interesting awesome. because it's for somebody like Shota not putting that card in your deck just <laughs> doesn't seem like an option. He loves stuff like that. Discover yeah. the formula for him. The card's incredible. Off the top. Yeah, it's really great. And it looks like he may take a turn here to fire it off. He kind of wants Saito to to put another creature onto the battlefield here. Then he can just burn him down. Yep. And given the mill game plan, you know, Showdown of the Skulls is an incredibly scary card, but given the game plan, it's kind of like, okay, that's fine. You know, that's that's four less cards I have to try to take out of your deck, and also that's one less four mana permanent for Tasha City of Laughter, and then if you hit another Showdown of the Skulls, as Saito did, okay, that's one less of them again, so... You know, all this stuff starts to add up over time with the mill strategy. It really does, and, and it's going well for Shota. You know, commune with spirits there for Saito. Just kind of break to hit a land, and he's got plenty of those. Looks like we... Uh, yeah, I'm going to assume that's a Kami of Transience there. Yes, that is. I have not actually seen that art, though, but it's pretty sweet. Oh, now we're going to discover the formula, and all these red cards are cheaper. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's an abrade for one. Yep. <laughs> so that's dead. Lito has to be getting frustrated here just watching Shota have an answer for actual everything. Yeah, I mean, as an aggressive player myself, I've been on the other end of this before, and it's just kind of like, so do I ever get to resolve anything or have right. the game go the way that I want it to? Oh, so Can no? More than a 2-2, two -two, please? Yeah. For a little while? <laughs> yeah. I have to execute my game plan at least a little bit here. Curious when Shota decides to... Uh to fire off the mascot exhibition as well. It's a great stabilizer. Very difficult to die after you've played it. It doesn't work particularly well with burn down the house, but he can just sort of cash in those creatures for, for value. And he has one more voltage search just to take out this Kami. Yeah. Just, and just picking them apart. I mean, this is this is just brutal if you're rooting for runes because it's just you know you see all these removal spells another copy of invoke calamity it's just kind of okay you know uh, it's just whatever shota however shota wants to approach the game he gets the option to do so it's just so tough there's so much removal yeah he's gonna tempt saito into <clears throat> playing a rune 
He knows that there's a rune of speed exiled with that showdown. And he's mm -hmm. like, you know what? I've got a removal spell for your Kami. You're not going to put another rune on the stack at instant speed. So just in case you decide to make a misstep and fire off the rune of speed on the Kami itself, I get a little extra value. So, so far, we've seen that Saito has been reluctant to do so. He's put most of the runes are on a land. Yeah. Just has built up that cave of the frost dragon so that whenever it's mm -hmm. time to go that route, that's the way to go. And it's actually, you know, pretty good because it's a little bit bigger than it normally would be. But activating that thing is essentially your entire turn. So there's a trade off there. Well, here Speaking we go. Of, yep. This is going to be a heck of a dragon. Look at that. Five, six lifelink trample flying. Eh, it might be time to make a move. <laughs> so he is actually forcing the issue here with the rune. Mm -hmm. And that's going to mean that Shota gets to get a little more value. But he may need to consider keeping as many burn spells as possible to try to kill this dragon. Yeah, this Cave of the Frost dragon is large enough that it matters. And this is a, time, this is a great time for another copy of Evoke Calamity. And, you know, again, utilizing what you have access to. But there may be no wrong way to eat this Reese's. There might yeah. be plenty of ways to take care of this thing. Hmm. He's going to go for Cathartic Pyre here. Oh, let's see what he does. A little trip to Value Town. Wow, okay. He's just going to bury him in cards. Oh, apparently. oh, no. <laughs> is that a farewell? It is. <laughs> this is one of the things I love about his deck. <laughs> he's in it and has a couple copies of Farewell hanging out. I absolutely love it. What in the heck? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you can cast it. You can cast it with Invoke Calamity. You've got the Forsaken, um, Forsaken Crossroads. And then yeah. also you have Unexpected Windfall. To create treasures and prismatic oh, mana. Flash treasures. double white, you know. Yeah, so yeah, sure. You can just jam double white into your old, uh, into your old is it strategy. Wow, this is just a clinic here from Shota. I I really don't envy being in Saito's seat and having to uh, endure this. I mean, Shota's got to find a way to finish the game at some point, though. I mean, as much fun as it's been watching invoke calamities, plural be cast and picking up a copy of farewell and everything you know like you do gotta kind of try to kill your opponent at some point yeah i think that that just comes down to the tasha's hideous laughter in hand and then he just finds any way to copy it right like he has galvanic iteration in the deck as well i guess you can cast farewell here in exile enchantments and that makes the cave of the frost dragon worse that mm -hmm. might be that's that might be fine it would leave Saito with with no more, with no creatures available at all. Yeah, I mean, there's still the cave, um, but it just gets significantly worse. Which okay, man, this fa farewell has been so impressive. Super good card, super good. Like when we we say sweepers, we usually just mean like oh, it kills creatures or this thing. Like that's a reset button right there. Yeah, there's a rune of might. So I guess Saito just has to start rebuilding onto this cave again. I uh, yeah, I mean this cave. Oddly enough, you know, it, it's a card Can that I personally, it? I don't think we're there. I think it's going to be over two turns. Mm. But yeah, I mean this card has overperformed in spots that I didn't think it was actually going to be all that relevant because it's so expensive to activate. But they're playing one for a reason. He's so close too. Yeah. So this is five power. Right, and he actually has a rune of speed. He's just a mana short from putting that on to making it just one. That doesn't do much. Okay, so how much help does he need right now? Like, yeah, I think Saito, you see, you see his hands on his head. Like, I think he actually might genuinely be surprised. Like, given everything that Shota has done this game, it is entirely possible that Toru can win, which I am actually just kind of awestruck about. Yeah, I wonder if Shota does the math he has a deck list and he knows the converted mana cost of every card that he's seen. 
you know, I wonder at what point just one Tasha's hideous laughter could get the job done. Uh, well, we're, we're about to see it. We're about to see. Two how of about them. two of them for yeah. the win? And Saito looks to the skies because this is the combo finish here for Shota. Well, it's it going to exile be. cards from the top of okay. the library. Yep. He got it. right. Yeah, until you hit twenty mana value total, but two of them is easily enough. That's the that's the classic for Mill too, right? Where it's like, well. You were going to have me dead next turn, but you're not going to get it next turn. Right. Wow, what a finish there from, from uh, Shoti Asoka. Crazy game. And like you said, it's almost torture here for Toru, right? He's just He, he kind of felt like I was so close to maybe closing this thing out. And then Shota's like, LOL, no. Yeah, you know, like, and, and I, what I love <laughs> about this is the dynamic between the two players. Toru is a lot more expressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can, you know, you get a lot of body language from him on the on the top left hand corner. And then for Shota, it's just, I don't know, just over here, just doing my thing. Not going to get a lot out of me. <laughs> I remember when he won the Pro Tour and, you know, a lot of people <laughs> like look up or put their arms to the sky or whatever. And um, when he won, he de-sideboarded. <laughs> well, I get ready for the next match. I just, just put <laughs> put the cards back in the deck box. It yeah. was just like business as usual for yeah. Sh for Shota. He is uh, he's ice cold when it comes he's, to these high pressure situations. You say when he remembers the Pro Tour, my my initial response is going to be which one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, he is a two-time Pro Tour champion. Of course, you're referring to Pro Tour Kaladesh in Honolulu mm -hmm. back in 2016, but also uh, a nice little victory. I was actually at this event that he won in Pro Tour Charleston. Mm -hmm. Was this a team team event? It was. It mm -hmm. was uh, back in 2006. That was a fun tournament. Ravnica Block Constructed. Block Constructed. Those That's right. haven't heard together in a while. That's right. Wild format, really, really good time. All right, looks like we, I believe, have mulligans from both players here. Oh, no, hang on a second. Now, this, let's take a look at Shota's sideboarding. What did he do? So the oh, Tashas are smoldering out. Smoldering egg? So the Tashas are out, the smoldering eggs are in, and that leads me to believe that the ways to win here are simply through the attack step now. Yes. As opposed to through milling. So he is just transformed into a pure control deck. Yes. Yes. That's exactly it. With four copies of Smoldering Egg. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is so sweet. Oh, now, man. I love this deck. So still has Invoke Calamity, still has Divide by Zero, you know, still has all of these tools to interact with the opponent. Ways to win, it appears, are those Smoldering Eggs, a Hall of Storm Giants, a Den of the Bugbear, and then uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see perhaps Mascot Exhibition um, lead to a victory. So there you go. Absolutely. You can see a heavy burn spell opener here with actually both copies of Voltage Surge, but he'll be happy to have one here as yep. he can put that Kami back into the bin now it may come back later but at least he uh isn't going to just get ran over he's also got a thundering rebuke and then he, he looks like he's found a land for the turn and yes thank you very much i will take an unexpected windfall yeah that's being on top there and the draw step here for toru though was a pretty good one there in runeforge champion really nice draw there from saito indeed and as you can see, that's going to set him up for some seriously powerful stuff. He has a Jukai Naturalist, which is the other half of the combo here. That, that'll make his runes free. He's got two of them in hand. And then he also has Showdown as a backup plan. So as it stands, he is going to lose his one and only there. But uh, he's got he's got plays. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be... This might actually happen for once, Marshall. You know, so many times yesterday we were talking about, well, you know... Showdown on the Skulls, kind of break open the mid game here a little bit for a Nye Runes player who's dying for it. Well, I might actually see that come to fruition for once, though uh, I might be wrong here because Juari Disruption might mess that up. Kind of interesting. Um, really great set of draws there for Shota. Now he gets to play untapped land and have access to Juari Disruption, and then failing that, he can play this unexpected windfall. It's really worked out nicely for him, though Saito's not interested. 
in running out the Jukai Naturalist into what he presumes is a burn spell. And he's right. So just going to be able to really churn through his library here, though, because he found another unexpected windfall. Yep. And a land, so he'll probably want to get rid of it if he's not forced to use the disruption or the voltage surge. And uh, even then, he's got a couple of treasures that he can cash in if he chooses to. So a lot of hope here for Shota. Even though he doesn't really have the tools right now, he's going to be seeing a lot of cards, and he's going to have a lot of mana available. All right, so here's unexpected windfall number two. Yeah, I don't want to discard four spike. I want to get him. <laughs> he definitely wants to get him, but I want to get I think him. he's noticed that Toru's just not interested in playing into it. So he's going to get rid of it. Very disciplined play there by Shota. A ton of mana now for Shota, too. That's right. He'll actually have access to 10 mana after playing this land. As is customary for this deck, he just gets to pass the turn. It, it's rare for him to need to play things at sorcery speed. He's not playing Planeswalkers or anything like that. So generally speaking, he, he gets to make his decisions on Toru's turn. Yeah, it's just wall of mana up, you know, make your move. Do what you're going right. to do. Uh, and what's fun about this, if you're on Shota's, if you're rooting for Shota, or you're on his side of the battlefield, all right, I've got removal spells. I've got Divide by Zero, and uh, you know, if you don't notice it, I have Hall of Storm Giants just ready to activate and humph one of your creatures, so. That's right. You better make the right move, and the right move might be no move, and Shota's cool with that too. Nice one here in hand for uh, for Toru. He's got Valorous Stance, very good against the burn spell strategies that mm -hmm. Shota brings to the table. Also, the Wandering Emperor a card that's had a huge impact on uh, on both of our formats this weekend. Really a, a great debut for the Wandering Emperor. Super cool card, super fun card, and uh, for the Wandering Emperor, well-balanced card. Okay, it looks like Saito is going to serve up here and say, all right, let's see what we want to do. The good news for Shota is that he actually has... Uh, a way to get around Valorous Stance. He yep. he can use Voltage Surge and just sacrifice a treasure to upgrade it to four damage and get a nice little blowout here if he'd like. Yeah, he <laughs> he also has Divide by Zero, so yep. good choices for him either way. But it looks like he's more interested in just getting this Kami off the battlefield. So the Kami bites the dust, the rune will go to the graveyard too. So nothing happens there. Here's an attack for two. And is there any reason to divide by zero or just use your life total as a resource? Okay, use the life total, fall down to 15. Shota's pulling the I'll allow it at this yeah, point. Sure. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Because if you're in, in Saito's seat, you're just like, come on, you just had everything. Ooh, invoke yeah. land. Troubles here. This is going to get very interesting with teachings of the archaics, which he's drawn here. And another invoke calamity. Fireworks on the horizon here for Shota. Toru is in agony. What right what is he freaking out about there? Well, just because I don't know, I don't know what he's hoping to draw. I'm, fifth land clearly was not it, but just can't be feeling good about the situation. This is so reminiscent of game number one, which is, yeah, we're in the mid game. You're at 15. I have no battlefield. This is agonizing. Definitely. It's been a very painful match yeah. for Toru. I, yeah. It's hard to put yourself in Toru's seat without seeing all the cards, but we're just over here answering literal, just everything. Nothing gets to stick. Nothing stays on the battlefield. I brought in Valorous Dance. Fire it off. Nope. Got the extra burn spell for that, too. Just nothing going. Nothing's working. Got to be frustrating. Working. Of course. Absolutely. I've been Toru before. I can actually say I've never been Shota because I would never play a deck like this. <laughs> so I've been Toru for 20 years. Oh, that's great. You see that uh, Shota's going to keep that extra land in hand here, perhaps eyeballing 
uh, a little flashback on an unexpected windfall down the line. He also has the uh, Prismari command in hand, and if he chooses to dig through his library, he'll, he'll, he'll appreciate having an extra kind of a dead card to give away with that. Here, finally, is the Wandering Emperor hitting the battlefield. This is going to make a samurai. It appears there will be a response. <laughs> yes, indeed. So yeah, one good thing about Voltage Surge is it also can hit Planeswalkers. So that redundant land's going to get discarded to the Unexpected Windfall. Two more cards, Cathartic Pyre, and a land into hand. Does leave behind a Samurai. So still a favorable exchange there for Saito, at least not a disaster. And this is big. Is it? <laughs> is it I guess it's disruption? just going to get divided here, or what is... Give me a Jawari disruption. Oh, yeah. oh no, he's tapped out? Yeah. Oh. And maybe a so, little more value. So he, oh my God, th this is, shield your eyes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is just absolute brutality now from Shoti Asoka. You may not see it by the expression on his face, but he is in his happy place right now. Every control player is just like, giving him a round of applause. This is how you do it. Yeah. It's oh, now a farewell. Sure. Aptly named. Kill that. Trigger this. Whew. I mean, kind of discard yeah. the. I was gonna say he doesn't even he doesn't even need farewell right now. He's got three he's got three spot removal spells in hand and a uh, and a smoldering egg that's gonna transform soon. Don't even need it. That's right. In fact, he would rather protect this board as it stands. The last hope here for Saito is gonna be that cave of the frost dragon. Like that, uh, yes, that thing's again. the only thing that's sticking around. Mm -hmm. And it is getting quite large at this yep. point. You're not wrong about that. That's the uh, that's the that's the avenue to victory once again. It didn't work out great last time, but you can try again this game. Yeah, it's tough because you know, multiple burn spells kind of needed. Yeah. He's another unexpected windfall here. For Shota, as he just churns through the library. Upgrade complete. <laughs> and there's also a divide by zero. And yes, here comes the damage. And if you've never seen this part. Hey, uh, Saito's life total is going to plummet. He he is going to absolutely see his uh, his life total just get chunked by this dragon now. Yeah, no need for uh, no need for Tasha's hideous laughter now. That 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 card's cyborg out for a reason, and and you know it does make a little bit of sense because it doesn't really do much on its own. Whereas smoldering egg and the transformation into this dragon here, this is to take over a game all by itself. Yeah, Ash, Ashmouth Dragon is no joke. It's two damage extra per spell. Boy, by the way, uh, good call said. This that? did this played out exactly how you said post board, right? He just went and got mascot exhibition now, and he's beating down with uh, Ashmouth Dragon. Just totally control deck now. Right, yeah. just completely flip the script where he doesn't need the cute combo. He's like, "Look, this isn't the matchup that I need this extra speed, right? Where I can kind of gotcha." He's like, "Meh, I'll just grind you into absolute oblivion," and that's what's happened. So my question hmm. is, what is the matchup where you want Tasha to use laughter? I'm curious too. Yeah, you know, where is it where it really shines? Because you would, th it's it's good here, but clearly he has built his deck in such a way where he's starting as a mill strategy and then is transforming accordingly, where you could argue to do the opposite, which is start as just a control deck that starts smoldering eggs and then transform into, oh, ha-ha, I have these Tasha City Slafters in the, in the sideboard that you're not prepared for, if he wanted to. Now, again, we're talking about a world-class Hall of Fame two-time Pro Tour champion here in Shota Yasoka, so this isn't an accident that his deck is built this way. It's more of just a general question of why would he build it this way? So can he finish the deal here? Because that looks like a good game. Japanese is a little rusty for me, but uh, bang, bang, that is going to do it. Shota yeah. Yasuoka finishes the job. And I'll tell you, 
If I'm Saito, I, I think I need to go into the bathroom, look in the mirror, have a good cry, you know, just <laughs> let it out. It's okay, safe space. And then uh, 